everybody calls Han Solo a bitch. Bring him on. I prefer a straight fight to all this sneaking around. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Oh, come on, bro. It's the wars. Well, May the 4th has come and gone, and we knew Star Wars Day was going to give us stuff to talk about. Now we just got to figure out how to fit it all in. This is the Wars and More. I'm Joe, and of course with me is my good buddy Doug. Hey Doug, how you doing this week? Doing pretty good, Joe. How are you doing? <laughs> Blown away. Yeah. I, I expected a lot of stuff to talk about, but I expected like, you know, merchandise. Ah, uh, yeah. Surprise stuff like that, right? Like, I didn't expect like, you know, directors and yeah. writers and <laughs> content. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't expect that. <laughs> I mean, I guess we should have, you know, it's, it, it it's been kind of slow recently. Yeah. Kind of. It's not something, uh, that's something we've become too familiar with in this day and age of star Wars. Right. That's still crazy to think about. I know we keep mentioning the, the dark times. Yes. Yes. But <laughs> it's still crazy to think about that. Now it's like, what, 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 what do you, what do we look at next? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? There's nothing this week. <laughs> yeah. We need more info. Yeah. Like, you know, our show is the wars and more, and we don't ever get time to talk about anything else. Right. Uh, <laughs> That's kind of how it is too. It's kind of hilarious, but. I, I, in a lot of ways, I'm okay with that. Cause yeah. 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 I mean, uh, Star, Star Wars. Wars is our passion. That is true. Star Wars is our passion. Uh, we just didn't expect Star Wars all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were, we were being realistic when we made this show. Like, Hey, we, we're going to have to talk about other stuff too. I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's only, only so, so much Star, Star Wars, Wars stuff out yeah. there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, here we are. Here we are. I mean, we get, we, we get to talk about like other stuff like every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, we're covered, right? We're that's, covered. That's it's in right. the name. That's right. <laughs> Anybody ever it. gets mad like, hey, you're supposed to talk about Star Wars. It's in the name, dude. Right, yeah. It's more. in the name. <laughs> uh, we couldn't be more vague <laughs> about it. <That's> <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's hey, let's go big, right? Let's let's start big. Okay. So Taika Waititi. Hope I said that right. Oh yeah. I, I know I, I got his first name now. I'm I'm very proud of myself. I got his first name now. <laughs> nice. That's good. You're doing uh, great, Joe. Huh? <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> I'm horrible with names. You oh, know you're this. fine. <laughs> I look at this stuff sometimes I'm like and you know, I got like a really messed up last name to say. Uh-huh. You think I'd be better at this. Yeah, well, you know. Like everybody says my name wrong. You figure I would sympathize with that and be really good at saying people's last name. <laughs> that is not the case. Well. <laughs> Anywho. Anyway, yeah. Apparently, the Mandalorian wasn't enough. He got his feet wet in Star Wars and wants to do more. Excellent. So he will be directing and co-writing a brand new Star Wars film. That will be released in theaters. Nice. So a feature film. So this is like the first bit of news we've had about a feature film as of late. Aside from, well, this guy isn't doing it. These guys aren't doing it. (laughs) So this is good. We're moving back in the right direction here. I like it. Uh, yeah, it, it, someone's hired. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're so used to hearing about people who are fired. Right. But fired, quit, whatever. I, you know, quit. Yeah. I, I gotta say, parting ways. <laughs> uh, creative judge, differences. Yeah. Yes, that's the big one right there. Uh, judging from his work that he did on the Mandalorian, I'm I'm all for it. I love it. Yeah, and uh, not to go down a path that we're going to go down later, but uh, Gallery, Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian came out, and we got to get 
a little more personal, I, I guess you could say, with the directors of that. Yep. Uh, we got to learn a little bit more about them. And I'll tell you what, when he was on screen, I was like, yes. Yeah, absolutely. This is someone we want. Right. Uh, I like his attitude. I like his humor. Yes. He likes to have uh, fun. Yeah. When it, when, he, when he showed up on screen, he's like, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to have even been a part of this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. And then laughs and then it shows all the fun he was having. Exactly. Yeah. I dig that. I dig that. I'm very excited to hear that. And now I don't know too much about his counterpart here. Nor which, do I. Uh, it's Christy Wilson Cairns? Cairns? Something like that. Okay. Uh, she'll be joining him for writing the screenplay for this film. Okay. So not too familiar with her. Um, I guess I can pull it up and just see. I, I, I think I did this earlier and didn't recognize her. No. Yeah. Don't know any of this stuff. So. Gotcha. Oh, apparently. I've heard good stuff about this. Apparently she wrote 1917. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Haven't seen it yet, but I've heard nothing but good about that one. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Co-writer on uh, 1917 with uh, Sam Mendes. All right. Well, you know, first impression, next Star Wars film's in good hands then. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even like, I was like. I, I felt like I looked at this, but apparently I didn't look hard enough. Yeah. And I even almost overlooked that right here. So yeah, 1917. That's pretty uh, well received from what I can tell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> war. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Seems fitting. So yeah, that's exciting, right? And 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 I just I I wonder is this the, the stuff we were hearing about, like going back, is this going to be in that high Republic era? Is this going to be, you know, what's the setting here? Don't know. Um, I don't know. I personally, I, I, I don't know. I would like to see this be some, something completely different. You know, let's start from square one somewhere, you know, in the timeline. Uh, and, you know, let's, I don't know, ready for something different, but still Star Wars, if you get my meaning. Yeah. The The one thing I like about Taika, too, is his humor. Oh, yeah. Um, And in the episodes that he directed, you see that. Oh, for sure. Um, So I'm, I'm really excited about that because that is something that is important in Star Wars. Yes. Uh, to have good humor. Um, and he did a good job of not going too far. Right. Now, in uh gallery, he said, yeah, he had Dave Filoni there to go, yeah, bring that back. You know, like. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and all the other directors to say, hey, let's bring that back. And maybe that's where this, uh, that's where uh, Christy Wilson Carnes will come in to say, hey, let's, let's, let's back that up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. So get the humor, you know, get the serious, bring it all together. Good Star Wars. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of the other things we talked about in the last couple of weeks, I can't remember, was it two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. We talked about a rumor that Leslie Headland was going to be developing a new series on Disney Plus. This was that female centric Disney plus series for star Wars. Yeah. You recall? Yep. Uh, con confirmed that she will be doing a Disney plus series subject matter. Not confirmed at all. Okay. None of that attached. So, so I'm just glad 
there's more Star Wars coming. So, yes. I mean, I, I, you know, we've talked about some of the hurdles that we've, you know, <laughs> we, we just talked about it a second ago. Uh, you know, people parting ways, you know, that were signing on to projects and things like that. And, you know, it starts to get a little, uh, worrisome, you know, uh, 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 you know, beginning of filming for, let's say Obi-Wan and stuff, you know, getting pushed back and it's like, okay, what's, what's going on here. Right. You start to get a little worried and it's nice to see that things are still, uh, getting put into the pipeline, you know? Yeah. And you know, I, I kind of wonder, you know, you see this, this, this co-writing thing right here. It, it's something that we saw before with like Lord and Miller, right? Yep. Um, didn't really go well. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, but these two, they seem like two different, you know, worlds kind of coming together to write something. Yeah. Like I said, we don't have a lot on uh, uh, Christy here, but it, 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 from what she's done, it's different than what Taika's done. Exactly. You know? Uh, Taika's coming in. He he did Thor. You know he he's yep. um done the Mandalorian, which that bodes well, right? That that bodes well for him staying on the project. He's yes. already been involved in Star Wars, and they like it. Yep. So that bodes well. He's he's also he's got an Oscar for uh what is it uh screen adapt adaptation or something like that. For uh, Jojo Rabbit, yes. So, uh, you know, it's it, again. I, I I haven't seen that, but uh, it's you know, kind of as I understand it, got some of that like uh, dark humor there. <laughs> yeah, the other thing I like 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 about Taika, right, is you know he got to talking about his roots in filmmaking, uh huh, and just making do with whatever like oh it, yeah it, yeah you know like oh they didn't use this over here hey can we use it like yeah. <laughs> yes uh, so i i like that so do i <laughs> that that idea of uh being able to just make things work well a lot of that is you know it's reminiscent of what they did for star wars back in that's the what i'm 70s. saying that's where i'm going <laughs> you know i mean that's yeah yeah <laughs> You're you're making the models for the film, and you go down to the hobby shop, and you 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 cannibalize a bunch of like uh, car and 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 airplane models, and you know glue stuff together and paint it, and all of a sudden you have a Millennium Falcon. It's like right, wow. It's like man, we need to come up with the iconic weapon for the Jedi. Well, I got this camera flash tube. All exactly. right, let's work with that. Exactly. That's exactly. <laughs> you right. know, like. Yep. So yeah, I, I, I like that kind of ingenuity like this and, and, uh, the confidence to be able to just say, yeah, I can, I can make something out of that. Right. So yeah, this is all promising stuff. Um, it's good to see projects are going forward one in, you know, current time. Right. Yeah. This has been a rough time. And any news about the idea of uh, something going forward is good news. For sure. And two, it's like we, like you said, we, we keep hearing about these new movie projects and, and, and departures from them. Yes. You know, it's good to hear that, hey, we're still working on stuff. We're going to, we're going to, we got this guy now. Yeah. I, I, Okay, so real quick, I just got to touch on this. Something that has happened in the Disney era, uh, Disney era of Star Wars that I'm not a big fan of is we get these release date announcements, right? So it's December of 2022, next Star Wars film. And there's people on board, and then they're parting ways. And, okay, so now i got to get someone new. And, uh, I, I, you know... <laughs> How do you, I, 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 I feel like 
you need to have something in production that's going to like actually move forward before you have like all these release dates. That's the part that bothers me a little bit. You know, I, I'd like to think if you, Hey, if you need a little more time, but make the story good, go right ahead. Cause that's, what's most important as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. Should be story should be first and foremost. Yes. Um, but at the same time, when you put story first and foremost, but you keep having creative differences and you let people go and you bring someone in, else in to pick up where they left off and like continue, like it, it's kind of, you know, the, the one exception to this rule so far has been rogue one. Yes. Rogue one is the one film in this mess of, you know, this director, this writer, this, 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 that, that, that worked really well. Yeah. I mean, everything else has been kind of like, yeah, you can tell they were having problems. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I, Even if it's just like tonal differences within the film, you know, like I, I was going to say the, the, as, as you know, st- as we hear, you know, we've heard story, you know, of, of the production of the last Jedi was great, but then, you know, the final product is like, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it, production needs to go well or when there's problems like i don't know i well the last jedi is like the one that there was like no problems i that's what i'm getting at you know uh, sometimes it almost seems like uh the to be put into a, a difficult position while the things being created can almost bring out better stuff if that makes any sense you know it's i don't know i'm not wording that right but it's it's when when you're well, facing I mean, adversities you know it, 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 and this this might not be popular to say but like maybe with the last jedi it was like you know like oh well we didn't see any of that coming we love it everything else is like uh does seem kind of predictable you're fired right <laughs> yeah that can, you're, you're right <laughs> <laughs> you're right that's that's kind of what it seems like if, if if you're if you're taking the role of uh top brass there yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean something right like yeah it, it, it is the one film that it like baffles me that there was literally like no problems. It was the smoothest thing that has probably ever happened in star Wars to be completely honest. Yeah, exactly. Even, even George Lucas had more issues than right. Ryan Johnson did. Yep. And yet it is the most polarizing. Yes. And I'll say, I'll say polarizing. Cause it's like, we, like I said, it, it's not, I'm not taking a side here, you know, like it, hate it, you know, okay with it. Yep. You know, kind of not okay with it. It doesn't matter. The film was polarizing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. The merits of that are up to your individual discussions. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it was the one film that was like smooth start to finish. Yeah. I mean, The Force Awakens even had it, that was originally slated for a May release, and then it got yep. pushed back. And exactly, Harrison you know, Ford breaking his foot or whatever. Yeah, all there that was kind of there stuff. was problems yeah. on yeah. The Force Awakens. Yep. So, yeah. Oh, but in other new faces coming to Star Wars. It has been, it's not really an announcement, right? It's a little more than rumor. You know, there's things that point to this. Mm -hmm. Robert Rodriguez and Peyton Reed 
are on for episodes of the Mandalorian season two. Yeah. So, uh, what we got, uh, I believe on the fourth, um, was Robert Rodriguez, uh, tweeted a picture of him, uh, standing next to the child, baby Yoda. And he says, I am truly humbled to say that I have now had the very rare privilege of directing the biggest star in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I would say that's pretty much a confirmation that he's directing at least an episode in season two. Yep. And yeah, that's good confirmation in our eyes, but it's not official, right? Like, right, right. It's it's not from Star Wars, <laughs> not from Lucasfilm. It's not from Disney. So, and then uh, Peyton Reed uh, tweeted a picture of his director's chair with his name on it, with Mando's helmet sitting on it, simply with the hashtag "May the Fourth Be With You." So, yep, I'd call that confirmation. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, there we have it, which. Uh, again, in my eyes, I think we have a couple of heavy hitters here that, uh, you know, come into play in the Star Wars sandbox a little bit. Yeah. Kind of cool. Yeah. I just hesitated to say we got an announcement. Well, we didn't really get an announcement. Yeah, exactly. So, but, but yeah. these are some heavy hitters coming in to do episodes of the Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, not that the show needs help, but <laughs> <laughs> not that we won't welcome, you know, this kind of, uh, theatrical power. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Robert Rodriguez, uh, you and I talked about with dust till dawn. Yes. Is, you know, a, a film that we like. Yep. And that's our um, reference point for him. Yes. I don't really know much of this other stuff he's done. Right. Uh, like, I, I, I've never really seen Sin City, things like that. But um, From Dust Till Dawn, it's one of those films that I enjoyed. Yeah. And it it kind of freaked me out as a kid. Nice. Yeah. That's funny. 1996, man. I was only like what, 12 years old. <laughs> so heading into, uh, you know, my, my preteen years, but yeah, yeah. Still was enough at as 12. Yeah. Not really a 12 year old film. Right. But I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Peyton Reed, uh, Ant Man, Ant Man and Wasp, right? So you know when it when it comes to uh, what you call a heavy hitter franchise as of late, you know can't go wrong with Marvel. So yeah, Marvel's pretty much where it's at, right? Like, right, exactly. You know, and, uh, and and who we talked about before, right? Uh, Taika Waititi, you know. Did coming from Ra Marvel? Ragnarok. I mean, yeah. Also within company, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, we know a guy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you can see how that would work. Yeah. Yeah. It works. It works. Well, rumors. I like rumors. Uh-huh. So, it's been a minute since we've heard anything really on the Obi-Wan Kenobi front, right? Yeah. Yeah, it has. Well, today was a good day because today a rumor popped up. Okay. That Hayden Christensen will appear in the Obi-Wan Disney Plus series. Really? 
Wow. Just a rumor. Yeah, but uh, I like none it. of the none of the big outlets are really reporting this yet. This is you know, a lot of the smaller outlets like you know, like we got this covered and things like that. Okay. Um but sometimes this stuff really takes hold. Yeah. Uh this one I can see. This is why we're talking about it. Because I could see this happening. This Obi-Wan series, we've talked about the 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 hurdles that they have to, you know, get over here with this series cuz it's Obi-Wan in exile, right? Right. He can't be going off on a bunch of adventures. Or they have well, to be very creative if he does. <laughs> yes. They got to they got to really work that out. And yeah. I mean, how much is going to happen on Tatooine that he can get involved in without revealing his location? Yeah. He's trying to hide from, you know, two Sith Lords. Yeah, exactly. Can't just run out swinging your laser sword and expect <laughs> expect to stay hidden. People are going to talk about that. Yeah. Saying. But in the interest of memories and flashbacks, this makes a lot of sense. It it really does because especially with the rumors that we've heard that uh, this Obi Wan series is going to touch on a lot of the uh, psychological nature of how everything that happened in the Clone Wars affected him and, and right at the end there with Anakin. So, yeah, I could definitely see that, you know, panning out as a, as a, a flashback or him, him meditating on what happened and, and we get to see kind of what's going on in his thoughts. Well, not only that, like just him stewing over, like, how did I miss this? Yeah. You know, what, uh, were, were there signs that I, I should have caught here? Well, I'm I'm just going to say this right now at the risk of, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> jumping the gun a little bit. Yes, there were signs. I mean, Obi-Wan had signs in the Clone Wars. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, right? Yeah, uh, something we saw earlier this season in the Clone Wars was Obi Wan uh, telling Anakin, "Well, did you at least tell her hello for me?" Right? Talking about right. tell Padme hello for me, and it's like, huh? I mean, and and he might not have thought at the time those things held the weight that they actually did, but looking back on it, I could see how he could really beat himself up over it. Well, yeah, I mean, so you think of Obi-Wan's feelings that he had for um, Satine. Yeah. You know, he probably wasn't going to, you know, jump down Anakin's throat about this because, you know, Anakin saw that. Exactly. He's just going to think he's a hypocrite. Right. That kind of makes me wonder if that was a little more widespread amongst the Jedi than, you know, they really let on. Yeah, it could be. You know, you know, these moments of having feelings for another yeah. that were beyond what Jedi should have. Maybe it's one of those things like, well, it happens to all of us, right? Like, exactly. Yes. It comes, it goes. No big deal. Yep. Uh, but we're going to keep harping on these points because you got to remember this. You can't can't get attached. You can't let it consume you. Exactly. But it happens. You just got to learn from it. Hmm. So maybe, yeah, maybe this is going to be reflection on those kinds of moments. What, what did he miss? Yeah, I, I like that. I like it a lot. Well, and it would be nice to see Hayden get to play out some of those Clone Wars like Anakin moments that we got to see. Yes. That would We be got cool. to see tons of good Anakin moments in the Clone Wars that never made it onto the big screen. Yes. 
Um, I'd love to see Hayden in some of these battles. Yeah. I, D- you know, doing stuff that uh, Obi-Wan would consider reckless. I, You know, I agree. I'm not so sure that's the kind of stuff we would get, though. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, Obi-Wan looking at the signs that he got that he should have, like, uh, keyed in on but yes but that might be what he's reflecting on maybe conversations with anakin and things like that that he but let me let me toss something else out here and why i think like a battle could be something we could see okay what if one of those moments that obi-wan's reflecting on is anakin putting himself in an in a what Obi-Wan might see as an unnecessary situation to save Ahsoka from something. We, we, we hear rumors of Rosario Dawson playing a live action Ahsoka in the Mandalorian. Yep. Well, if she's already geared up to do that. Why couldn't she do an Obi-Wan appearance as well? It's not out of the realm of possibility. So she gets herself into a, a situation, which we know Ahsoka did throughout the series. Yep. Is it possible that Obi-Wan could be re- reflecting on one of those moments? Like, th- that was a sign. Could be, yeah. And and that would be a glaring sign because he put himself at undue risk to save someone. And even some of the situations with Padme. With, you know, being out in the field. Yeah. Uh, particularly thinking of some of the uh, the the... Lux, uh, uh, was it Von Terry? Yep. Some of those episodes hmm. where, where Padme got herself into a bad situation and Anakin went rushing in. Yeah. So stuff like that. I Maybe not that. like large scale battles. Cause this is a TV show, right? Live action TV show. Yeah. So some of that would just be cost way too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very true. Uh, you know, whatever it might be, if there's any weight to this rumor, it's just got me more excited for this, uh, series. Agreed. Well, speaking of the Clone Wars, Dave Filoni comes to mind. Ah, yes, he does. And... Anytime Dave Filoni is out and speaking, we listen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he was on uh, Entertainment Tonight, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. He was on ET. Uh, they did an interview with him, and uh, he had some stuff to say uh, in regards to uh, the last arc of the Clone Wars here, and. Uh, and some other stuff, but, uh, uh, I guess first we can, uh, uh, go into a little bit about, uh, his thoughts on, on how he was, uh, directing, uh, the actors, primarily Ashley and D Bradley Baker on how to, how to play these characters because because everyone's got a pretty good idea of where these characters are going to end up you know we don't know all the fine details but uh you know we got a general idea and he had to help them kind of push that out of their mind a little bit yeah, it's a unique situation because we do know if you are a fan or know star wars at all you know so much about what's going to happen and it can make things bittersweet and and you know for the actors even for d and ashley it's like I had to keep telling them, and I, I told them in the you know, weeks leading up to this, you know, you know what's going to happen, but they don't. For this to be successful, you've got to get in that headspace, you know, and I really worked with them to say, like, okay, it's almost like you have to get your own emotions out, and now we do the part, because there's no awareness. Like, the hope is this is all going to be over soon. The hope mm-hmm. is we're going to get through this, and especially for Anakin, that things are just going to be back to normal. He likes the way things are. You know, he's a hero and he's got everything going for him. And I think the one thing that 
I felt strongly about was that she's in a different place in life and he never quite fully gets that when he's with her again. That right. leaving the Jedi Order and meeting Trace and Rafa, those adventures have made an impact on her. So, kind of interesting to think about that. Like how, you know, even all of us as fans, we we have some other stuff that informs us on on where these characters are headed and and so do, the, so do the voice actors and how they have to like kind of put that aside and and to actually play these parts as well as they as they did because you know they're operating in a space where they're not really supposed to know the outcome right so pretty cool i mean just, just that's a that's an interesting thing to point out too is that Anakin, you know, he's still in it, right? Yeah. He's still in every day, new battle, you know, every day, a new challenge. Ahsoka's facing different challenges now that she's left the order, you know? Exactly. So they're in a different spot in life. It's, that's, that's a cool thing to point out and think about. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, he actually had something pretty cool to say that, which, that after he said it, it made me think about, uh, you know, we, all of us as fans were kind of like heartbroken when Clone Wars went away and we wanted it to have its proper ending, right? We, we, Clone Wars just kind of went away. Then we had the lost missions things like that and all of that was great but it never had a proper ending and we were clamoring for this uh interesting what dave's thinking about uh how that went down and and whether you know we're we're not better off for uh having things happen the way they did people don't know but some of the original versions that we batted around with this uh story didn't always have it coinciding with Revenge of the Sith, you know? So there were, I mean, that's just story evolution. There are many things that happen along the way, and um, I'm glad for where it went. The, the only downer, I think, is, whereas on the edges, I hope people are, they would have been triply so if they'd never seen Rebels, you know? And yet, yeah. I think writing Rebels and being a part of that show with all the people I worked on there really helped make this show, this version of Clone Wars better, as did working on Mandalorian. It, it all, you know, you just improve as you go and so had we done this years ago it wouldn't be nearly as good i think as it is now it's kind of interesting because hmm. you know he speaks specific specifically about rebels which is one of those things that you know we're informed of as fans going into the end of the clone wars now and uh you know, it's, we have certain expectations and, you know, how they crafted the story and, and, uh, you know, use a lot of visual stuff to actually, uh, you know, get their points across and, 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 and tell the story they wanted to tell. I, I, I have to wonder now if, you know, the end of the Clone Wars, like Dave said, probably would not have been as good as it was now. You know, we almost needed this break and we had to have Rebels in between and, and all of that. So, so yeah, silver lining. Yeah, yeah. It kind of worked out for the best. With, and I, I don't want to, like, I don't want to be that guy and, and tease what we're going to talk about, but I mean, <laughs> I see what he he's going with because there are moments that we will talk about later on in this episode about the last episode of clone wars that have rebels tie -ins. Yes. And we would not have that conversation piece without rebels. Exactly. So if this would have happened before rebels, we would have never thought to look at that. Exactly. And it, it would have been a different revelation later on, like say this finished up and then we got rebels, 
later on, it would have been like an aha moment. But it wouldn't have felt as weighty watching that last scene. Right. That last scene had tie-ins to, you know, you know, Star Wars, you know, going forward. Yep. And Rebels. Yep. So, yeah, there's... There is a silver lining there, and yeah. I see it. I see his point. Yes. Um. And I don't think, I don't think any of us are like super mad that we didn't get it back then, right? Well, not now. We're just happy we got we're it. We're just happy we, we were got mad it. When yeah. We didn't get it then, we, right? Yeah, we sure. were mad back then. Yes. Yes. Um. But we got it in the end. All is well. Yes. So exactly. And yes, there is a silver lining there. There are other tie-ins, and, and 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 even with you know Rex's development, things like that, we kind of know where he's headed. So that that added a different dynamic to watching this these these episodes, not just this one, but these right. episodes. So, yeah, I like it, and and, and he's right. Yeah, for sure. Um. He goes on to talk a little bit about uh, the Mandalorian. Um, you know, we were just talking about Mandalorian stuff and, and how great the show is. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, helps make it so great is that they all enjoy doing it. Yeah. We were just, as you can see in gallery, we were just having a really fun time doing it. We are yeah. aware of the responsibility and, 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 you know, the pressure that can be involved in making Star Wars, but... You know, John has an incredible knack, knack at assembling a team of people, uh, like-minded people, really creative people, top talent. Um, and it just became a really fun thing for all of us. I think, you know, I don't know if you've seen the ep- episode with the directors where we are all talking mm-hmm. around the round table, but that to me, like, forget even if there was an audience watching, it's such a gift, you know, that that John wants to make that show because I know those people. I like all of those people. I love hearing their stories. I think they're all friends and I just really value, you know, it makes me remember what they taught me about directing, about being on set. And and I had a lot of takeaways and I have a lot of good memories about it. Uh, and that goes for the entire cast and crew. So it seems like they have a lot of fun making Star Wars, which you know, I have to say, I, I I feel like you have to enjoy doing it. Like like Dave talks about, in order, you know, it helps in making it good too. You know. Yeah, I mean you're <laughs> you're, you're playing in that sandbox, right? You, right. It, you're gonna have more fun if you can get into it like <laughs> exactly and 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 you're gonna do better if you can have fun and get into it right um so yeah i i i, I love the way that this kind of just worked out here because yeah we're talking about gallery now right <laughs> <laughs> yeah a little uh, bit. uh well but go ahead i was just gonna say uh in this ET interview, um, Dave was asked one more question. Something okay. that he's been hearing, uh, this question he's been hearing a lot lately. I've been asked this question about uh, live action of Soka for a long time. Uh, I always see it as, wow, it's amazing how far we've come with the character. You know, to go from the Clone Wars movie where a lot of fans are like, what do you mean Anakin had a Padawan? Who is this kid? And why is she talking back so much? Like, and she's really transformed uh, the fans' opinions and come into her own as a character. And for me, the, a successful character is one that, you know, you say Luke Skywalker, you all know how I mean. If I say uh, King Arthur, you know how I mean. Frodo Baggins, you know, and they're just iconic characters. They were to me growing up, you know, and it's, I think that a character like that, if you do a character well, they can live in any medium. It's just about telling stories. So if there's a good story and a good reason, then it could, you know, she could take shape or take form in any medium. I have to say, I really love what he had to say right there. Yeah. And, uh, (laughs) 
first off, he's right. Like it, she can take form in any medium. Yes. 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 That 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 is true. Uh, I. I'd call that one more like pebble in the, the, the mountain of confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's funny. He says that like that, you know, Luke Skywalker, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Frodo Baggins, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. King Arthur, you know who I'm talking about. Exactly. And yes, Dave, don't sell yourself short. Ahsoka Tano, we know who you're talking about. Exactly. It's, it is that way now. Not not only do we know who you're talking about, but the way he puts it is, you know how I mean, which I I take it to mean that uh, you know the archetype of that character. Yes, that the all encompassing everything of that character, and and yes, Ahsoka fits that bill as well. Yeah, and I know that's not what he was going for. Like that, Ahsoka fits that bill now. He he he's not that kind of person, right? Right. He yeah, that I, would yes. that would give himself that own credit, his own credit like that. Like, right. But it's true. It is true. Ahsoka is in that range now. Yes. Uh, and it is because of Rebels. It is because of the Clone Wars. Yep. And, and the 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 quality of storytelling in those series. Exactly. Ahsoka has reached that level. Yes. And I love the fact that when, when live action Ahsoka is brought up, he, he says, yeah, if the story's good, because for me as a star Wars fan, it's always all about the story. Right. And, I couldn't agree more with the man. I, I, if the story's good, yeah, you know, they can make it. Uh, technologically, obviously, they can make it. But the story's got to be there. And, you know, that's just that's just Dave showing us that he gets it. <laughs> you know? And, 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 you know, that's what I love. Right. And, and the guy. <laughs> not to go too far off here because yeah we got to keep moving yep but if you remember in recent weeks i talked about you know i have friends that are like oh the last jedi ruined star wars uh-huh you know the rise of skywalker terrible right you know, the sequel trilogy disney star wars terrible and then i bring up the clone wars and they're like man ahsoka dude yeah <laughs> i'm like wait 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 what <laughs> you or saying Ahsoka, dude. <laughs> right. So yes, Ahsoka has reached that level with fandom. And it's all types of fandom. Absolutely. I mean, if there was a a character that could be the olive branch for all of fandom, I think this is the one, dude. Yeah, yeah, very well could be the one. Because uh, if there is a character that is the chosen one to unite fandom, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I mean, so Anakin was the chosen one, but if there is a chosen one to unite fandom in these troubled times, it is Ahsoka Tano. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> All right, so gallery we. Got, we gotta keep moving here, gallery. Yes. So, uh, the first episode of Star Wars Gall Gallery, The Mandalorian, aired, and I could not help myself but to uh, pull a couple clips from it because, again, you know, we're just like gushing all over the man. But I was blown away how uh, they had everyone talking about Dave Filoni and. Uh, what everyone on set thought of him. Dave Filoni, great collaborator, great animator, great director, storyteller, writer, but also he has a strong intuition about what George would say. He's the encyclopedia of all of the Star Wars lore. You can ask him anything. You can be like, hey, what about the shoulder pad? And Dave Filoni will 
be like, well, that's not actually, you know, <laughs> what it looks like. But let me tell you why, and let me tell you the history of why. There's a purity to his relationship to Star Wars in general that is just like, you, it's, it's really obvious. There's no like Dave Filoni ego. It's just like always all about Star Wars and George and the stuff that's important. We wouldn't be able to do this show without Dave Filoni. He is the truest lover of the material. He's so well informed and he knows exactly what would fit, what would make sense. I think it's like he, more than anyone, just sort of innately knows what's right and what's wrong for Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. So I have to say, these are all of his peers talking yeah, about We're not him. alone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everybody loves Dave Filoni. Uh, I'm telling you, it is amazing. Uh, so Yeah, it's, it's amazing because like this is what we say about Dave Filoni after a Star Wars celebration. Yeah. Right? Like, like yeah. Dave Filoni goes on stage, he talks, and we're like, this guy gets it. Yes. Like, like Dave for Star Wars 2020, right? Like, right, exactly. I mean, it, this is this is how we feel. And then you hear the people he's worked with on The Mandalorian in, 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 a, in a medium that he's never worked in before in live action. Yeah. And everybody's saying this. <laughs> yep. Like Dave Filoni. He is the, the, the steward that will push star Wars into the future. <laughs> like exactly. And, and, and not only do that, but pay homage to everything that is star Wars throughout the years. Right. You don't have to do fan service or this or that, but Dave Filoni will make it all connect. Exactly. That's, that's, and that's, that's the misconception amongst like the, you know, what people call the hardcore Star Wars nerds, right? Yeah. It is that we want, you know, you, you have to pay your alms to the original trilogy or this or that. No, no, you don't. But there has to be connective tissue. Yes. Like it has to fit in the, the, the puzzle and the story that is Star Wars. Right. Right. That's all we ask. Exactly. That's exactly I mean, right. You and I had a conversation today about Harry Potter. Yeah. Like if they wrote something about Harry Potter that didn't fit in the Harry Potter universe, like people would lose their freaking minds. Absolutely. I mean, in fact, I, don't, I think Fantastic Beasts was not well received, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but it's, I don't know. I, I, I have to say, uh, Dave is the guy and they talk, you know, uh, uh, the way they're talking about Dave, I mean, Pedro Pascal on there said, we couldn't make the Mandalorian without Dave Filoni. And it's like, wow, that's saying a lot. You know, when I heard that, it was like, yeah, yeah, we got to play this on the show, but, um, <laughs> Just, just to kind of like uh, put the exclamation point on it, uh, I have a little clip here of Dave Filoni and John Favreau on the set talking about a shot they're going to do, and I imagine that every single one of us imagines this is how we would be on the set because this is how we are in real life, always talking with our friends about Star Wars. It's more of a like passerby moment throwaway. It's not like a focused. Yeah. It's more like he walks through and then we sit on it yes. and then we cut. You it's know? like Apocalypse Now. It adds a little th menace. It's it also the, gives some backstory. It's like when three of his head gets blasted and they, they all walk by and an empire and they pan over to it and they don't see it. No, I don't remember it's that. Like, uh, it's a deep cut for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Dave's, Dave's going to be the guy on set always going... Oh yeah, it's like this other time in Star Wars where this happened. Or, <laughs> he's he's always pulling the Star Wars reference, right? Yeah, that's us. But that's... at the same time, I gotta say, I gotta give credit to John Favreau right there too, sure, because he is thinking in a George Lucas like mindset as well. Yes, absolutely. Because he's like, oh, it's like Apocalypse Now, yeah. like which is which is a, a George Lucas influence, right? Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. And that's why I think these two guys working together work so well. Yeah, because, I mean, it's obvious that uh, John Favreau has a lot of that same kind of influence that George Lucas had. Yep. Right? Like, these films, that film, you know, like, those kinds of stories. And then Dave has that, that as well. Because Dave loves, like, those off-the-wall type things, too. Yep. But... Dave has got that Star Wars mindset. Yes. As well. So like like I I'm telling you right now too, like John Favreau in a couple years is going to definitely be even more of a Star Wars powerhouse than he is now oh, as well. Yeah. Having worked with Dave. Absolutely. With the mindset he already has. Yep. These two. These two right here. These two could be an unstoppable force in Star Wars. Oh, I, I couldn't agree it. more. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I I think uh, you can never, God, uh, it's almost going to be blasphemous saying this. You could never replace George Lucas. But I think the two of these guys working together the way they are could get close. Right, and, and, and the thing I love about these two working together and doing it is their willingness to bring in other talent. Yes. And and other creatives that they, they see that um that potential in. Because Absolutely. if it wasn't for John Favreau and Dave Filoni you know, it's, it's especially John Favreau, because John Favreau it, it, it is is really the um, the talent scout for this, right? Yep. Like Dave is your your Star Wars encyclopedia, but John Favreau's the talent scout here. Yeah. We wouldn't have got a a Deborah Chow. Exactly. We wouldn't have got Taika. Yep. You know, like that kind of collaboration and 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 forward thinking for Star Wars is very promising for the future. These two together could really kick some ass. Yeah. <laughs> to put it bluntly. Well put. I mean, and and like I said, the 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 bringing in of other talent along with their vision is awesome. You know, we we always it, it's it's a it's a new thing now. Since George has stepped away yep. and sold to Disney, but the the desire to see new faces in Star Wars, um, this is the way to do it, <laughs> is to have people like John Favreau and Dave Filoni that are able to find this other talent. Yes. Yes. This is the way. This is the way. Because... <laughs> You look at what's spawned out of this already. I mean, Deborah Chow is already working on other Star Wars material. Yep. Taika is already working on other Star Wars material. Yep. It seems pretty clear that Mandalorian is going to help. It, it, <laughs> it has become a launch pad for, uh, for yeah. uh, other things. So, And there's just more people coming. Yes, exactly. Season two has already showed that more people are coming in. Yep. And it's not even out yet. Exactly. So it's just too bad. They didn't do this first. Yeah, I know it. I know. <laughs> Have something to add to the conversation or you just want to let us know how we're doing. Email us show at the wars and That's the best place to get in on the action. But if social media is a little more to your liking, at The Wars and More on Twitter is always a good place to interact with us. And we're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Wars and More. And of course, your portal to this and everything else, The Wars and More, is TheWarsandMore.com. All right, so it's the moment we've been looking forward to and dreading at the same time. <laughs> yes, yes we so have. We're here to talk about Season 7 episode 12 the final episode of the clone wars 
victory and death. Well, yeah. I got to say, <laughs> I knew that this final arc was going to be something special. Um, I didn't expect what we got <laughs> in, in the least. I didn't expect it one to be as dark as it's been. Right. This has been an exceptionally dark series of episodes. Yes, it has. Uh, but when you compare what is running alongside, it is suitable. Yeah. You know, we're running alongside Revenge of the Sith. You know, we're, we're dealing with Order 66. These are not good moments in Star Wars history. Right. Uh, these are dark times. <laughs> I, I think. I think the way this arc of the Clone Wars, uh, you know, you talk about Order sixty six, and 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 we have in Revenge of the Sith, we have all these these uh, shots of all these Jedi across the galaxy getting taken out by the clones, which kind of. You know, it tells you what's going on, but, you know, this arc kind of, you know, punches you in the gut with, you know, this is dark. This is bad for everyone, everywhere. And it's going on everywhere, you know? I mean. So. At the risk of jumping around, right? Yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah, this is kind of what we do, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> We're not very good at linear. <laughs> <laughs> but last week, okay, we ended our conversation with talking about how are they going to get out of there? Yeah. Right? And 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 we threw all this around. They're going to shoot their way out. We talked about how Rex doesn't want to kill his brothers. Right. Ahsoka doesn't want to kill these clones. Right. So we threw around the idea that Rex may take Ahsoka like like he's got her captive. Yep. Uh, we talked about how they might just eh, eh, situation doesn't give them much choice. They might just shoot their way out. Right. Uh, they ended up finding a balance there that we didn't even think of. I can't believe we didn't even consider him switching his blasters to stun. Yeah. I can't believe we didn't consider that, but. But because it's happened so much in Star Wars, right? Yeah, yeah, that it has. Uh, what's interesting about that, though, is he switches the blasters to stun on Ahsoka's insistence. I mean, yes, you know he he is the one making the point to her. He's like, look, these guys are going. You know, I I've been where they're at. I know what exactly what they're thinking. Yeah, so but, they are I mean, going and, to try. And he and has an kill amazing you. moment in this too. But when you're, you're saying that, she's the one that insists that um, he switches to stun against, like, like you said, like he knows where their minds at. Yeah, but this is why Rex respects Ahsoka the way he does. Yes. This is why he respects Anakin the way he does. Yep. Ahsoka and Anakin are very similar in their thinking with the clones. Right. They treat them like people. They don't treat them like the droids that they're fighting. Yeah, exactly. They, and, and not only people, but individuals, you know. Yeah. Like, they know them by name. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And they refer to them by name as, as individual persons. And, and, you know, we've seen throughout this series, the, the different markings and stuff they put on their armor and things like that. They, they have individuality, yep. these clones, but Ahsoka and Anakin are the two Jedi, the two generals that really latch on to that individualism. Obi-Wan yeah. does in a way. 
but not like Anakin and Ahsoka. Did. Yeah, I was gonna say it's in a, it's a, it's in a more limited fashion for sure. Yeah, uh, Anakin and, and Ahsoka do it in a very caring way. Yeah, whereas Obi Wan does it as a a courtesy. Right. In in my opinion. Not saying Obi Wan doesn't care for the clones at all. He he sure certainly does. Right. Because Obi Wan is a good person, but he follows that Jedi code, that attachment kind of thing. Right? Yes. He avoids that. You know, we talked about that. You know, with in Revenge of the Sith. You know, like with Anakin, we're gonna go back and help them. They're doing their job, so we can do ours. Right. Exactly. So there's the, the the dichotomy in that that mindset. Yep. And you know they do the stun thing, and then later on they do the captive thing that we talked about. Yep. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, I'm glad they did that because like we were really, you know, kind of throwing our hand in with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So it was funny though how. You know, uh, Jesse calls Rex out on it. You know, he's like, you know, because he's he thinks about it, right? Rex explains Ahsoka's not part of the Jedi Order anymore. So, you know, basically, we're going to need some clarification on this kind of thing, right? And, but he's like, but you gave the order. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's what Jesse's like. Yeah, uh, wait a minute. This thing, this it doesn't make sense here. You told us earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So. And they were already suspect of him helping her anyway. Yeah. There was that discussion in the background. Is is Rex ha- helping Tano escape? Right. And it's unconfirmed, you know. Then he shows up with her as a, you know, doing the air quotes, captive. Right. It's like, wait, wait, you're the one that said killer. <laughs> exactly. And this is all to buy time. Have the droids, uh, uh, you know, get those elevator platforms <laughs> going down. Uh, there's some pretty creative, uh, uh, stuff going on here to, uh, you know, even the odds a little bit. Yeah. There was a lot going on. Like, all through that that whole sequence. I mean this this episode from the start, we were in that room. Right. The door gets broken into and we hit the gas pedal and we don't stop. Exactly. I mean that was it was it, it, it it's weird because it didn't seem as fast paced as some of the other episodes. Right. But it really was probably faster. Yeah. In all honesty. Um, I think the the moments to kind of, you know, build emotion, things like that, the the tension kinda took you out of that for a second, like just to kind of ground you. And that maybe those quick little glimpses slowed the pace down enough to where you didn't feel like you were being rushed. Yeah. And I think maybe that was the purpose. Like it, we don't, we, we want to be fast here. We want to, we want to show the urgency of the situation, but we don't want to feel like we're rushing you through the story. Right. So there were some good moments to kind of back it down for a second, but this really was a fast paced episode. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the uh, Darth Maul going after the shuttle. Uh, I liked, you know, for because for a second I was thinking, oh, maybe Maul's going to jump in the shuttle and come over, pick them up, and off they go kind of thing, maybe. But, you know, he gives it right back to Ahsoka. You know, Ahsoka released him to cause chaos. She said, I'm not rooting for you. And he makes his way to the shuttle. He's like, this is what you wanted. Yeah, this is the chaos you wanted, right? Yep. Like, So 
That was cool. Yeah, and I know? gotta say, like, I did not think for one second that Maul was going to help Ahsoka until he actually got in the shuttle. Right. And there seemed to be a moment of pause. Like when he fired everything up. Yep. He seemed to have a moment to take a breath. Yep. And I was like, oh, no way. Is he really going to? There he goes. Nope. Yep. <laughs> Off he goes. Yep. But that moment of pause was like, whoa, did he actually consider? Right. Saving Ahsoka. And and then she pulls the uh, the Ray move. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and holding, holds onto the ship. Holding onto the ship with the force. Yeah, he's like, wow, okay. Yeah, that, that was, was um, that was a tense moment and, 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 and really wild. Like, he was, you know, hitting the throttle there and just dragging her. Yeah. It's like, wow, they're, they're really adding... They, they've always added a little bit of an element of physical exertion in in uh, using force abilities like that. Yep. Like when Luke was trying to raise the X-wing. Yeah. You know he's he's showing real physical exertion, but then Yoda does it. Seems like there's little physical exertion until he's done. Right. He he kind of takes a breath. Yep. In this moment, you really see the physical toll it's taking on Ahsoka. And not only that, but he's dragging her across the hangar bay. Yep. That was wild. And, and really cool. Yeah, it was. That was a really cool scene. And, and, and she had to peel off like, right. cause like she's now she's getting wounded. Yep. That was, you know, <laughs> okay. So then, then they go on to, uh, uh, you know, they need a quick escape, right? Quick exit. And she makes one of the coolest lightsaber moves ever. Throws both lightsabers into the floor, spins in a circle and pulls them back to her hands. And the, the, the floor they're standing on just falls to the down to the next level. Which was like, yeah, that wow was awesome. <laughs> yes, like she she just throws them down, like just very determined, yes. into the floor, and then with the force spins them around her. Yep, like like emphasis on like she didn't actually like cut into the floor like with her hands. No, she used the force to move those blades around in a circle. Yes, and then calls them back to her. Yeah, that was great. That was an awesome lightsaber move, gotta say. Um, Ahsoka had some of the coolest moments in Star Wars several times throughout this entire arc. Yes. I mean, from the first episode in this arc where she landed on that platform with that explosion behind her. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and then the the moment with Maul where that glass flies through the room. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, like you said, the, the holding onto the ship. Yep. And then this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, I'll tell you what, it, it, stepping aside from that for a second, like, it, yeah, it was all cool. And yeah, one of the best lightsaber moves we have ever seen. But I got to say something. We know what happens to Ahsoka and Rex, right? Yeah. After these episodes. But I'll tell you what, they did a good job in this episode of of getting you lost in the moment. Right. And when our characters are getting wounded and hit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You feel concerned. Yes. Uh, and which... like, you almost have to like snap. like, dude, you know, they're not going to die. Right. But like. Like when Ahsoka got hit, it was like, oh. Yeah, exactly. Rex got hit. I'm like, no, Rex. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I know you live. What am I doing? <laughs> it's true, though. I mean. But it was a hindsight kind of thing. Like in the moment, I was like, whoa. 
it, they did a good job of showing real risk for characters that we know the outcome for. Yes. And, uh, and they, they were in real danger, right? The, like, yeah. The other thing where, where I would say the, the, uh, the revenge of the Sith, I don't want to say it failed, but it, it, it really didn't highlight how, how much of a fight the Jedi could fight back. Right. Uh, uh you look at when when they pan around the galaxy and uh you know Jedi yeah, all the Jedi seem so out. helpless. Exactly. Ala Skura was just boom, shot in the back. Uh Kiari Mundi put up a fight, but not that big of a fight. You know, right. Plo Koon just shot out of the sky. And it's like okay. But with Ahsoka here. Obviously, she's putting up a huge fight along with the help of Rex. But then you see her start to lose it. Yeah, let me let me let me just put a little bit of I feel like they did a good job of addressing that in this arc. OK, um, the Jedi were surprised. OK, the Jedi had established a trust with the clones. Yep. And they were surprised by this move. Ahsoka had an advantage here. Okay? okay. Rex struggled with the order. It's true. Very true. It gave her a moment of warning. Yep. So once she was aware of the situation, I think if the Jedi in Revenge of the Sith were aware of what was coming down upon them, they would have put up much more of a fight. But they weren't. They were caught by surprise. Yeah. Ahsoka had that moment of warning. Yoda was so in tune with the force that he saw it coming. Right. So I think that's, you know, it, it, yeah, I understand what you're saying. The Jedi, there should have been more of them that put up a fight. I understand with showing yeah. the element of surprise and some of them getting caught by that. Like if you have a uh, Ayla Secura I'm get caught, you have Plo Koon get caught. Cool. But, Kiati Mundi, he saw it. He should have put up more of a fight. I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to make it sound like a, a, a bad thing or anything. It was probably done the way it was done for brevity in the movie, but I'm just saying. Uh, they could have had at least one or two oh, really put up a fight. Like, okay, but so we're, we're we're really getting to see. Ahsoka, you know, I got, I guess, I guess my real point is we see Jedi do amazing things, right? And, and we saw Ahsoka do a bunch of amazing things in this episode, but eventually with as many clones as there are, she's getting worn down. She's only able to, you know, fend them off so long before it starts to take its toll on her and, you know, you could see that happening. Yeah. Which is, which is what I really liked about the episode. And, and it showed that for as amazing as Jedi are, they aren't invincible, you know? Yeah. They're not all powerful. Exactly. You know, it, it really puts some weight to, um, Qui-Gon, right? Episode one. Yes. Anakin says, no one can kill a Jedi. Right. I wish that were true. Yep. Yeah, that 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 was you know, in hindsight, that's like wow. Yeah. Yeah, we see Jedi do such amazing things, but you know, the the the, the act of surprise on the clones for one. Two, the Jedi are used to fighting a droid army. Yeah. The droid army doesn't think like the clones do. So an overwhelming force of clones versus a, a, a seeming seemingly overwhelming force of droids are two different things. Yes. So yeah, it, it, it was. This does add a lot to episode three. This whole arc does. Yes. And 
I think this running alongside episode three actually um, kind of slates that thirst to see Jedi fight back, right? Yep. So, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. But I, like I said, at the same time, I was like, eh, Ahsoka had an advantage. Rex kind of tried to fight it for a second. Uh, it is true. It is true. Like, like we went way in depth with that last week, right? Like he was like, <laughs> his mind's toned his arm to do something, but he's trying to fight it. Right. So, um, you know, she, she has another amazing, uh, uh, free fall <laughs> episode, right? Getting, getting back to the, the Y wing that they commandeered. And, uh, man, I'll yeah. tell you, th- dude, that whole crash sequence, uh huh, that was just beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 what we saw on screen was just stunning. What they were able to do. Absolutely. Um, and, I like that the skill in that whole situation did not rely on Ahsoka alone. Right. Rex had a lot to do with the success of that. Yes. Yep. Trying to put the ship where she needed it to be and stuff. Yep. For sure. Um, it's real easy to um, just have the Jedi find their way, right? Yep. Um but that really wasn't an option for Ahsoka here. Right. Rex had to get himself in the right spot. Yep. So it showed the skill of the clone as well in that situation. Yeah, for sure. And added even more to the accomplishment that they just had. Cause you know, Rex is of the same cloth. as the other clones, right? Right. And he has that skill. And the two of them just overcame that same level of skill in the other clones. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, that was... (laughs) There's so much. (laughs) (laughs) I mean... It's crazy to me too. Like we never knew, like we, I shouldn't say we never knew. We knew we wanted more Darth Maul. Yep. At the end of episode one, we were kind of like, well, what? Yeah, I know. You killed this guy. Right. Um, I don't think we really understood how much more we wanted Darth Maul, but I think the problem they have with this arc and ending the Clone Wars is we want even more Darth Maul. That was craziness. Yeah, it was. The amount of power this character has. He, okay, Ahsoka and Rex fought through all these clones, right? With, you know, stun weapons and lightsabers. Right. Right. This guy did it with his bare hands and the force. Yeah, I was going to say, he used the force, but yeah. But he didn't have a lightsaber. True. I mean, when he pulled the, like, was that this episode? Or the last episode? I can't remember. Pulling the panels off the walls and using Yeah, yeah. using him as a shield. Last episode. Okay. There was something in this one, too, that was, like, crazy. But yeah, Darth Maul's force power, like his strength in the force is insane. Yes. We've seen nothing but building for this character. We need to see more of that. I'm sorry. (laughs) We just need to see more of that. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, we kind of know what he does in between a little bit. But I think there's some stories to tell there. Just oh, yeah. Saying. I could definitely Just throwing that it. out there. Yeah. 
So all of this leads us to we have the downship mm-hmm. and we get the scene. We have all of these clones buried and you know, their helmets used as markers. Oh, there was one thing I alluded to. Uh, and and we didn't cover it real quick. Like I said, Rex had a moment, right? Okay. When they were in that control room, you yeah. know, and the, and and the ship's crashing because Darth Maul has now set this ship to crashing. Yeah. There's a moment where Rex takes off his helmet, and there are tears streaming down his face. Oh yeah, dude, that hit me in the feels. All right. Oh <laughs> like, sure, sure. I mean, this, we never had that, that personal connection with the clones in the films. The right. clones were just the clones. They weren't much different than the droids other than they were resembling of humans, right? Yeah, yeah. But this series has put a human element to them that has been just astonishing. Like it, it, it's really, it's really taken the, uh, the, just like the droids stigma away from them. Right. Right. So, and that moment, like kind of brought it all to a head. Right. Exactly. And, and I think. And, you know, with Ahsoka along the way there, that, you know, he was already thinking like, look, we got to kill them. Like, <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's the part that, that's the part that, uh, uh, you know, is so hard about what he's telling her. He's like, look, I know what these guys, what's, you know, what's driving these guys. They can't help it, but they are going to try and kill you, you know, and they're not going to stop. And he had the attitude of responding in kind. Exactly. Like, so we need to do what we need to do, you know? So, and, and that had to pain him. Now, those are his brothers. That's right. That's, you know, but, but, he, but he knew that in the position that they were in, there was nothing he could do about that. Right. So, even yeah, though it hurt, I, I just, <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to point that out because before we get to that next part, like it, 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 it adds to as why they would do what they did with yeah. burying these clones. Right. Yes. Like the respect from Ahsoka and the respect from Rex for all these fallen soldiers. Right. Who were just trying to kill them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they were all just trying to kill them, but they still, cared for them absolutely it was wild yeah yeah (laughs) and like in 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 one hand you can see it the other hand you're like why are you doing this right so yeah all right continue i just wanted to bring that up no no that's that's great uh so we have all the clones buried with their helmets as markers and um uh, you know, we see Ahsoka like paying her respects and, uh, you know, she, <laughs> it, it's, uh, basically drops the lightsaber. Yeah. What to, I gotta ask, what do you make of that? Well, that looked like, uh, <sighs> like she looked at it with like, I'm done with this. Kinda. Kinda. Like, uh, I think at that point she knew that the Jedi were done. Right? Like, like you think back on this arc and she tells Yoda, you know, you know, I did my duty as a citizen. And Yoda says, not as a Jedi? And she's like, not yet. Well, I think not yet 
became not ever Never again. Yeah. So, uh, I have to believe that she, she was thinking that return was possible before that. Possibly. Yes. Because she still, she still had at that point, she still had it in her mind that she would be able to talk to Anakin about what Maul had told her, you know, personally. And that obviously didn't happen. And she had that, 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 uh, moment of being in touch with the force when Anakin was going through all of his stuff. Yep. And, uh, after that, and after what just happened with her and Rex, it was like, okay, this is all that we knew before is over now. So I, I, I look at that as her kind of like closing the book on that part of her life. And she just knows that she has to go on and become someone else. And from a logic perspective, she's probably thinking, I can leave this here and anyone coming to investigate would probably assume that I would take this with me if I were still around. So by leaving it, it's an indication that she's gone. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. I see that. I have another thought on all that, but. Okay. Yeah, well, not just that moment, but just the, the leaving that behind. Uh, yeah. I'll get to that after I talk about this next thing. Okay. So Vader shows up. Yes. And there is an obvious emotional moment for Vader when he finds his saber. As emotional as it can be through a robotic looking mask, right? I yeah. I, I I feel like there's some emotion there. Like I got like a like almost like wow she's gone kind of vibe. Yep. Um I don't feel like Anakin was at the point yet where if he saw Ahsoka, he would have just struck her down. I don't think that would have been the case. Oh, you don't think so? No. Ooh. I think it may have been the result from the interaction. Like, he would have resorted to that, yes. But that would not have been the initial... Um, reaction for him. He wouldn't have went right to violence. I think it was too soon. How soon do you think it was? Because I got to say, I think there's years between. Years, huh? Yep, because we are talking full stormtrooper armor. Uh, like completely updated to episode four style shuttle Tiderian, uh, Imperial okay. shuttle. And, you know, I, I would have to say, yeah, we're, we're you know, I'm not going to say we're closer to, uh, episode four than three, but, but I would say there's probably years between episode three and the moment where, Okay, so he's probably on the hunt for Jedi. Yes. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. I'm thinking this is the the whole reason for Vader being there is to investigate, you know, where is Ahsoka? And Okay. Now that you put <laughs> it that way. And now that I think about it more, given the like you said, the stormtrooper armor, the shuttle, right? Yeah, it's probably been a minute. Yeah, that probably would have 
resulted in conflict immediately. That's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> I'm thinking uh I'm thinking that her ruse with the lightsaber kind of worked right there. Because his next encounter with Ahsoka in Rebels is ah the apprentice, apprentice lives. lives. So yeah. It's that's kind of how I'm led to take it there. I mean, I have to believe that you know all that worked to make Vader believe that she was gone. You know, went down with the ship, so to speak. I mean, because it would so also. So we get to Rebels, right? Yeah. There's many years that have passed. Right? Yes. Like we're closer to episode four. Correct. So. I, I don't so, know. I still don't think I don't think he would have been as quick to arms against Ahsoka. Maybe he would have tried to have turned her. Like or at least get her to join him, you know? Maybe. I don't know. There seemed to be like a, a real moment of reflection there that was that was a little more personable than he was just hunting Jedi. It, I, I totally get what you're saying. I, okay. I, I get it. But, you know, maybe maybe finding the lightsaber, you know, he, he lights it up, right? And it lights up blue. He made him blue. You know, maybe he's thinking back fondly of their last interaction or or whatever, you know. But... It's, right. it's my thing is I have a hard time believing that Anakin, even as Darth Vader, having turned to the dark side, would be so quick to turn on Ahsoka and 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 let go of how he felt for her. Okay, he 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 had a lot of feelings for her as a mentor as almost like a big brother or father figure, you know, yep. like he, he just cared for Ahsoka a lot. Yeah. And so I recently rewatched the clone wars movie. Ah, yes, yes. Okay, and there was a moment in there, kind of an aha moment for me, right? Okay. That I never really gave a lot of thought to until now. And it was an interaction between Obi-Wan and Yoda about Anakin taking on a Padawan. Okay. You want to roll it? Yes. Okay. Let's just hope Anakin is ready for this responsibility. Ready he is to teach an apprentice, to let go of his pupil. A greater challenge it will be. Master this, Skywalker mess. So to let go, that will be the harder challenge. Yeah. I don't feel like Anakin becoming Darth Vader would make that any easier. In fact, I think it would make it harder, especially in the early days. See, I'm not so sure about that. I think after many years of hunting down Jedi, maybe he would desensitize. I mean, he had moments in their fight in Rebels. Yeah. There were moments where he just, he wasn't ready to just kill her. Well, he, here's the thing about Anakin, though. Anakin, as a character, he did things. He made the decisions, like, 
with Padme on Mustafar. He, you know, when 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 she says you're going down a path I cannot follow, he loses it. Yeah, but that's not what made him lose it. What made him lose it was seeing Obi Wan in the in the the opening for the ship. Yeah, but because he he said liar and like you're like what? And then you see Obi Wan standing there. It's like oh crap. <laughs> yeah, I could see why he think he immediately thought that she brought Obi Wan there to kill him. Right. That she had turned on him. Like yeah, okay. His rage was building with her opposing him yeah i'd agree with that yeah but he didn't lose it because of what she said i think that conversation might have went on for another you know a good long while but it wouldn't have gone anywhere no you no, know what i'm saying agreed. it wouldn't have gone anywhere but i, I could see vader and i Ahsoka. don't think he would have went quick to violence against her for saying that it was obi-wan that drove him to that he still had his attachment. And you, you saw that even after he let go, like his rage with seeing Obi-Wan and, 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 and taking that action against her. When he let her go and stop choking her, you saw it in his face. Like he couldn't believe he just did that. Do you, do you think Mustafar would have gone differently if Ahsoka would have stowed away aboard Padme's ship and showed up there? Yes. Huh. Differently how? Um, well, um, one, Ahsoka wasn't a Jedi anymore. Right. So instantly he wouldn't have jumped to, you know, because he was convinced that the Jedi were taking over. Right. He let Palpatine get in his head that the Jedi were trying to take over. Yeah. Ahsoka's not a Jedi. He wouldn't have made that connection right away. But Ahsoka would have would have also tried to stop him from... And I, I'm not saying that it wouldn't have devolved into a fight. Right. But the whole escalation would have been much different. Ahsoka would have had a chance to speak before Anakin gave himself over to rage. For sure, without a doubt, in my opinion. Hmm. Like, he was already, like, from from episode two on, he was already holding a grudge against Obi-Wan. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. He didn't have that with Ahsoka. Right. There was a trust with Ahsoka. He wanted... Uh, uh, I mean, I he would have saw that as an opportunity to bring Ahsoka back to him. Hmm. Granted, he was already turned. Right. His attempt to bring Ahsoka back to him in that point would have been trying to get her to join him to take the emperor down. Yes. So it would have devolved a different way. Yeah. But I believe it would have been much different. Padme if Ahsoka was the one that showed up, Padme may never have been harmed. Interesting. Because Ahsoka would have had, there would have been ample time for the conversation between Anakin and Ahsoka, therefore directing Anakin's rage solely at Ahsoka as she denied him. Yeah. Makes sense. Now Padme you know, had a, had a, a connection to Obi-Wan. She had already mentioned Obi-Wan in that conversation. Right. So, yeah, I think it would have been much different. Huh. Do I think Anakin could have been turned back? Hell no. Yeah. Probably not at that point. I think, I think the turning back moment was, uh, lost when he ignited his lightsaber against younglings. It was lost then. Yeah. 
for sure. So aside from Ahsoka coming out and saying, no, 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 no. I know a way we can save your wife. Hmm. All was lost. I I still feel as though um, he was there at the the wreckage to look for any trace of Ahsoka. And this being years later in his hunt for Jedi. Quick thought. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the, the expanded universe. Yeah. Okay. Vader did many things that the Emperor disapproved of. Sure. Um, many things that were connected to his old life. That the Emperor frowned upon. Yeah. Do you think that maybe he was there looking as Anakin and not as Vader? I'd have a hard time buying that. Because there were many times where the Emperor would would literally Chastise force him. lightning the crap out of <laughs> Vader yeah. because he was not suppressing Anakin. Uh yeah. Specifically one of the books would be like uh Lords of the Sith, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's one where That's in canon. Yeah. So I just here's my thing. Here's my hang up with all of this, right? The Darth Vader that we see in Rogue One and Episode Four and on, if 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 what you're saying is one hundred percent spot on, it makes in some way, some weird way for me right now, it makes that Darth Vader a little less intimidating. Still does some horrible crap, <sighs> um, but just but does it like like so? That Vader has no care for the person he doesn't know. Yeah, true. Anakin Skywalker is a character of attachment. Yeah, it makes total sense that Vader would be a character of attachment. Luke Skywalker was able to pull on those strings. Yeah, yeah. I, and he was able he was able to pull on those strings without even doing it. Empire was a perfect example of that. He Vader is the one that ex- extended the branch. Not Luke. Right. Luke didn't come out in Empire and say bother this. No. Vader was the one that realized he had a connection to Luke. That's his son. Yep. So he extended the branch. I don't feel like Ahsoka would have been any different at that point. Ahsoka's problem for Rebels was Ahsoka had already been working against him. To this point in the end of this Clone Wars episode, Ahsoka hadn't been working against Vader yet. True. By the time of Rebels, Ahsoka's already been helping the rebels assisting them he knows it but the, that, the the point of contact is he she is actually with the rebels he's hunting yeah but would that stop him because so was luke would that yeah, stop but, him from trying to turn her first he, but he didn't he didn't like not extend a branch to her he did hmm It's definitely force going to force me to uh, do a rewatch of Rebels. <laughs> yeah, I need to do this too. But there was definitely that 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 reach out where you had Matt Lanter's voice. Yeah. Oh, so you're talking about the confrontation they have? Yes. Okay. Huh. Like he didn't like not fight Luke right away either. He he immediately fought Luke. Right. 
He didn't have this conversation first. No, he beat the crap out of him first and then ex- had this conversation. <laughs> the the fight happened before the branch was extended. I don't think Ahsoka's story is any different. Hmm. Interesting. So. I, 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 I like all this. I do. I just, I don't want to, you know, Vader was a, a <laughs> more machine than man killing machine. And I don't want any of this to kind of like detract from that. Moving right forward, but, you know but what it I'm was saying? the remnants of Luke's or, or of Anakin Skywalker that always detracted from that. I I, I get it, you and, know, and I understand and the the there part are, you played. You know, there are absolutely four persons, and and only four persons in the entire universe that I think could connect with the Anakin Skywalker within Darth Vader, and that is Luke, Leia. Ahsoka, <laughs> hmm. and if she were alive at that time, Padme. Yeah. Wow. Interesting That's it. stuff. Yeah. I will say that this is going to uh, warrant a lot more thought. I'm going to have to ponder on this for quite some time. We have to chew it over and uh, watch it again. And yeah, because uh, in the interest of uh, brevity. <laughs> Which this is not brevity anymore, right? <laughs> but yeah, we, we we'll have to postpone this conversation, and this conversation will come up again. I can promise you that. Yes, we are not done here. Uh, we got some rewatches to do, not only of this arc, but of Rebels. Yeah, but of the films. <laughs> yeah, uh, there there's so much connective stuff here that we're really going to have to dive deep and find all the little nuggets in here, right? <laughs> yes, for sure. Because there are a ton. There are a ton. Yeah. All right. So with that, <laughs> if you have anything to add to the conversation, you can always email us, show at the It's the best way to get a hold of us. We're also on social media. We're at the Wars and More on Twitter. Facebook.com slash the Wars and More. And you find all that and all the ways to find the show over at the Wars and com. Any final thoughts this week, Doug? Uh, no, I think that covers it for now. All right. We'll talk next week. 